<laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Inside NU Editor's all-time Northwestern football draft. It is what it sounds like. We are on week something of quarantine content, so we are picking our all-time Northwestern teams, not player by player. We are, do not have the time. I mean, maybe we do have the time, but we are not picking 22 guys for each team, but we are picking one quarterback, two running backs, two pass catchers, and one defense each. And you, our readers here at Inside and you, are going to vote on you, who you think picked the best team. So... As you know, here are all five of us right here. Myself, Daniel Olinger, Colin Cruz, Eli Karp, Max Stone, and Leah Asimakopoulos. Leah, I always feel like I butcher your last name. I hope oh, you I killed it. That was perfect. <laughs> all right, so we'll get right into it. Our draft order, it'll be a snake draft, so we'll reverse order after the first round, and the first pick is Max Stone. Um. So everyone knows that in a fantasy draft, you never pick a QB in the first round, although I really wanted to. Um, so I will be starting with the running back. So taking, be taking uh, the best Northwestern running back of all time in Justin Jackson. Any comments? <laughs> you know, it's interesting <laughs> because I, as I've been wondering, like going through this, I'm like, no, this is not a fantasy draft. Like there are certain rules, as Max said, you, you know, that apply in any fantasy draft, unless you are truly devoid of the brain. And then, but at the same time, like maybe this is because I won't be a GM and, you know, in my future, but like, do you take the best player available? I mean, it's like, at least looking through this trough of Northwestern players, we knew it before, but it is increasingly apparent the talent, you know, the, the, for a fantasy draft among only five people with five you know, spots each or six spots each, five you know, skill players positions each, the talent is kind of scant, you know? It, it's especially after the, you know, the running back and wide receiver, the first one, you, you either go for it all or you kind of, you know, spread yourself a little thin. Um, so at least, at least I know the quarterbacks are not going first. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the thing is, I was thinking about that, too, and, like, if we're doing this based on on fans voting, it's also not necessarily, like, just picking the best player. Like, you want to pick a player with name recognition as well, but then it's, like, you're playing with the whole era thing. Like, for us, name recognition for some players might not, like, be as relevant, um, and it really depends on, like, who's voting. So, a lot of factors going into this one. I mean, yeah. based on that logic. I might as well just take Gretchen Schuerman with the second overall <laughs> pick. That's right. Yeah, and a football draft is like, I mean, it's just, if, a basketball draft might be different. As you can tell, I'm very into basketball, but the two jerseys hung behind me. But like a basketball draft, you're probably not picking by positions as much. I mean, you can, but basketball is more of a positionless sport where you're just trying to acquire the most talent. But like football, positions are very important, they're designated. So, trying to make sure you get the right value at certain spots. If maybe Mac thought, looked at the other running backs down the list and thought, you know, I might as well get a good running back now before the drop-off comes. So, like, Mac, was that what you thought maybe? I was thinking that, especially because I had to – I mean, if I was somewhere like middle of the pack in drafting order, I probably would have thought differently. But since I had the first pick, I'm waiting another, what, nine picks until I pick again or eight picks? Yeah, eight picks. Bad enough. Yeah. Um, I thought I might as well just hopefully get the best player available. And everyone knows him, so – yeah. Popularity is not an issue with Justin Jackson. And moving right along, we'll go to Eli Karp, who has the second pick in our draft. I'm torn between two players at different positions. Uh, because I have more, I feel like there's more, a little bit more depth of one position at least than the other. So I'm going to go and make a bit of a splash, depending. I mean, maybe you'll think this, but. I'm going to take a wide receiver oh. off the board and far and away, far and away, even though he's really not anyone we would know primarily, but Dwayne Bates. Curse you, Eli. That was who I was, I was yeah. hoping to fall. <laughs> I mean, this is when I say that like the talent is kind of scant, especially when it comes to the pass catchers. There is Dwayne Bates and then there is everyone else. <laughs> I mean, you, you look at the stats, like, they're impressive. He's got, you know, in his four seasons, 
nearly 3,400 yards. The next closest person in terms of yardage, Richard Buchanan, is almost 2,500. That's basically he has 900 more receiving yards, and that is and his average reception uh, is 16 yards, which is impressive. So between that, he also I mean leads the program in touchdowns with 26, which is also clearly the most. And to me, it's a pretty pretty easy selection with going by that. No, you said right there the difference between Dwayne Bates and all the rest of the wide receivers in Northwestern's history. Just like, and you said the difference in yardage. The difference between Dwayne Bates' total yardage and second place on the all-time receiving list for Northwestern is the same difference as second place and 16th place. So it's it's just a wide like valley between him and everyone else. So, I mean, I was really hoping on picking him. So I have nothing but praise for that pick. That is a really good pick. Thank you. Okay, so I guess I'm up. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm up, right? Leah but, is up. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> no oh, hate, oh. Colin. <laughs> um, I, I, I My bad. No, you're good. You're, you're good. <laughs> um, okay, so I am also going to go with the old, you know, fantasy football strategy and, and pick a running back first, and I'm going to go with some – I guess, name recognition slash nostalgia. And I'm going to go with Darnell Autry, who was our um, Rose Bowl or 1995, 96 Rose Bowl running back. I mean, there's, again, like you said it right there. It's something that I've, I've been thinking coming in this draft. I bet a lot of you are thinking it too, that you want to get running backs and wide receivers early with kind of the, the spread of talent over Northwestern's history. Uh, Darnell Autry, he finished fourth in the Heisman voting in 1995, ninth in 1996. I mean, back-to-back top 10 Heisman finishes is something few college football players can say, let alone Northwestern football players. So, again, really no complaints to that pick, except that I couldn't have him. Yeah, I was was hoping that uh, that Leah would do something crazy, but (laughs) – That was that was gonna be my pick. I I thought something. Uh, I don't know. Thought of, yeah. Sorry, right, Colin. You, Colin, you can pick now. It, I can. All right. So um, actually, no. The voters say he's being moved to fifth. <laughs> we, we are stripping so, the fifth round draft pick for his inaccuracy of order. Yeah. For Commissioner. Rules. I saw the. I woke up at like nine a.m. my time. I saw the order. I was like, I'm third, and I've had it that I was. <laughs> So, um, so I'm gonna go with uh, Damian Anderson, another running back. Um, Dang it! This is like the top four <laughs> of my board all gone. I knew I yeah. shouldn't have gone fifth. Tough, tough toenails. Um, yeah, a little more name recognition. Obviously, his his son has done some good things for the Cats uh, in the past year. Um, and but yeah, Damian, number two all time rusher uh, behind Justin Jackson. Um, you know, perhaps doesn't have the same name recognition as Autry, um, who spent a season less in Evanston, I believe, but still phenomenal, a uh, versatile player, can p- catch passes as well. Um, so yeah, definitely glad to add him to the fold. Yeah, I think I think what you said there about uh, name recognition with him is interesting, because I, I mean, I have not been following Northwestern as long as many of our other staffers and my fellow students have, but you know, I think I would maybe argue that his name recognition is a lot more relevant now with his, you know, with his son being on campus and with like his son playing, having such a great game against UNLV this past year, there was that whole like father son thing going on and, um, you know, building up that adding to that legacy by, by having Drake now playing on the team. Yeah. I think it's interesting. Almost like there's almost like a reciprocal effect on one another that they have. Like I'm sure many, you know, Northwestern students or fans of our age are not very familiar. They wouldn't be familiar with Damian Anderson, but because Drake Anderson exists, there there's all the stories about his dad, and then everyone was like, "Oh wow, is this guy's you know dad, or is this guy's son?" And then you know everyone else is like, "Oh wow, you know one of our best running backs of all time. He's got a son who's pretty good on the team." Like it, it almost works in an interesting reciprocal effect. I find. So I, I did the honorable thing in that when I made that random list generator this morning that put me fifth, I stuck with it. 
And now literally the top four on the board I made for myself have all been selected. You know, I was kind of thinking I'm smart, like, oh, they're going to go for a quarterback or something else. And maybe I'll, I'll get like Dwayne Bates, but no, I forgot that the four people I'm working with are also very smart and also follow sports closely and think like that too. So that's probably on me. So now I am stuck in a tough place because I feel like there is a drop off in those running backs. And I mean, the drop, we already discussed the drop off in receivers is Dwayne Bates and everybody else. Um, I think I am going to go with a running back at least because I got two back-to-back picks here. So I got, got to think this through, but I think I will go with Tyrell Sutton as my running back. Oh, Daniel, that's so annoying. That's a good pick. You know, I'm <laughs> just going to – especially because I, I had him actually ranked a little bit higher than that. Like, I was really holding out uh, on no basis whatsoever that he would potentially fall to me. But I'm most enthralled, honestly, with his versatility. I mean, you look at – he's average, he averages 5.3 yards a carry, but – he also has over 1,200 yards receiving and gets you a back who can do it both. Yeah, I took my sunglasses off right now because I wrote something down next to his name and I wanted to read it. But um, I believe he has the third best rushing season in Northwestern history. So, I, I mean, it, it's again, it's really hard, like, with all these guys, just there is such a big drop-off and – He's not the same maybe as Damian Anderson, Darnell Autry, and Justin Jackson, but he's still really good. Like, I think if we had to say out of any of these positions, which one's the most, like, consistently good, like, throughout Northwestern's history, Northwestern's had some really good running backs. I think I can say that in confidence. Like, it's probably Northwestern's best skill position. It certainly is a wide receiver. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so now I am left with a tough decision. Again... Again, not sure if I want to go a running back or wide receiver or just pull the trigger on a quarterback. Do it. We'll send. We'll send. I think I – since I already lost out on the play for value with those top four picks when I was hoping I could get any one of those four if they fell – I think I'm just going to have to go old school, take the best quarterback, take the winner, take the one of the NFL's best winners ever. I'm going Otto Graham. Oh. <laughs> Let's go. We're going to win, baby. Oh, man. That we was... win it. I was, I was hoping you weren't going to, you weren't going to like think that far back and everyone's going to be like, oh, we've got like, you know, the, the, all the quarterbacks in the past two decades. No one was going to actually. Give it some thought. Really, that had nev- <laughs> he had never even gonna... crossed my radar. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I was going to redeem myself in the eyes of the Facebook commenters. Hey, God. <laughs> um, hey, uh, Colin, it is your fault that Otto Graham is not popular. Right. <laughs> no, I, I've i known Otto Graham's gone to Northwestern for years because my dad is a diehard Cleveland Browns fan. And considering Otto Graham led the the only six, truly successful era in Brown's history, I get reminded every day that he's probably one of the greatest Northwestern quarterbacks ever and one of the greatest NFL quarterbacks ever. Also, one of Northwestern's greatest basketball players ever. And baseball players. I mean, he's the guy's really good. He wants, If you got seven rings, you're pretty good. Insane. <laughs> so I'll, I'll live with that. And Colin, we are back to you. Okay, um, so I – Otto Graham was my number two. That was, that was going to be my moment of redemption. <laughs> um, alas, tis not to be. Uh, but I'm going to also dip into the quarterback pool um, and go with Clayton Thorson. You know, why not? Ooh. Oh, wow. Ooh. I know. I know. Okay, that's right there. I can tell <laughs> you right now, and you can clip this now. <laughs> That right there so far, and maybe through the first two, maybe three rounds, might be the most contentious pick we have. Parts are flying. I didn't know Colin Hayes is coming. He wasn't in my top five quarterbacks. He barely makes mine. I'm reaching a little bit. All I have to say is he's a winner, Um, you know, old reliable, four-year starter. Can't go wrong with four. Um, I think – Obviously, I think quarterback's a slightly deep position, but I think if there's anybody I want behind center for the Cats, 
Uh, it's going to be him. And you guys can tell me how much I'm wrong, but, you know. He did somewhere. throw 45 interceptions in four years. Colin, we won't tell you you're wrong. We will let the voters tell you yeah. you're wrong. Uh, you know what? I, you know, more power to them, but, you know, I'm taking a risk here. It's a big one. Um, but that's what happens when autograms is no longer on the board. All right, Leah, you're up. So I'm not going to take a quarterback because I think there are still three quarterbacks on the board that I would be more than happy with. And um, Clayton Thorson was not one of them, but that's okay, Colin. Um, I'm going to take – so I could go running back, but, like, I don't really – like, I'm not super swayed by any of the remaining running backs as I am with pass catchers. So I think I'm going to take Jeremy Ebert as a pass Ooh. catcher. <laughs> I had him on there. He was my second ranked pass catcher if I pull out my Mel Kuyper. <laughs> Good pick. Thanks, guys. Now, as you, as you can tell, we do not know a ton about Jeremy Ebert. So <laughs> yeah. discussion. All I know is that he, he was better than the others, so we're going to go with him. All right, Eli, you're up. Okay, so... I have a receiver. I'm not yet going to go for a quarterback. Um, so I think that probably leaves me with a running back. And let's see, I'm, be I'm between two. God, I really pour through. Yeah, uh, I wish I had a little more history on the two of these because they really overlapped and have such identical stats in certain ways. So... Uh, I'm going to go with Jason Wright. Oh, come on, Eli. <laughs> I was... I mean, if you look... I mean, Dan, I would be upset, but also there is someone who has, like, very, very similar stats. I know, so, but Jason... Um, unless you've watched tape, which you might have. You might have. I'll give you... Like, <laughs> I, knowing you, you probably have. I, I, did, I did not, actually. <laughs> busy day, but, um, no, I believe it. I have it written down around here. Like, Jason Wright... Was wasn't it? I need better handwriting. Okay, I haven't trouble reading my trust. But um, <laughs> Doctor Olinger. <laughs> uh, yeah, but no, I I wanted J he was on my list of backup like options at running back. So Jason Wright's a good pick. Thank you. I mean, the the arts per carry is, I mean, very up there as well as the the touchdowns. So I can't. I can't really, you know, numbers don't lie. I'm just curious. Well, I'll get to this discussion a little bit later once the next person or once certain back is then taken, <laughs> um, have this discussion. Well, no, the thing with Jason Wright, too, is just those last two seasons, like, it's hard to put to back, put together back-to-back 1,000-yard -to -back rushing seasons. And his senior year, he had 20 rushing touchdowns. That's insane. Like, that's just really, really good numbers for a two-year stretch. So, no, I thought – when I looked at his numbers, too, I was like, this guy, I don't know how aware everyone is of him. Maybe I can steal him, but nope, you got me again. Yeah, definitely looking through some of the stats, even at you know, generally face value, and having known a little bit before, like we, people generally think of Northwestern as a defensive team now, until like 2015, that really wasn't really the way with fits. But with Randy Walker as head coach, this mm -hmm. team had a fun offense, but really didn't play defense. <laughs> Not at all. All right, Mac, we are back to you. All right, so I really need a wide receiver because they're disappearing quickly. Um, so I'm going to go with Richard Buchanan because he's best available in my eyes. Um, Good pick. He's, uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of yards, receiving yards, he's second all-time in Northwestern history. Um, so that's an easy pick for me. I don't know a lot about him. I'm purely picking. I mean, he played in an era that I don't know if Northwestern football, it doesn't seem like they were very good then, um, the late 80s. So I'm picking him purely off of stats. And then my second pick, I don't know if you guys know this guy. I know him because I personally watched him play when I was younger, and he was one of my favorite players. Um, he is a running back. He is not the person you were talking about, Eli, I don't think, but I'm going to go with Venrick Mark. Nice. Um, purely because he's one of the most versatile players I've ever seen play for Northwestern. Um, his 2012 season, he rushed for, I think over a thousand yards. He averaged like 19 yards per punt return. Um, I think he made the all American team as a punt return. I could be wrong though. I know. And then he doesn't have a lot of 
uh, there's not a huge sample size. He really only had one great season under Foster, and then he transferred out, but he was very good during that season, so I'm taking him. You, know, ju- you got Justin Jackson and Venerick Mark in your backfield. That is serious speed. Yeah, I think, I mean, at least for, for the wide receiver uh, kind of situation, I think the analogy I draw is angel food cake in the way that, to, for me, it's over before it begins. And that's just because there is so little talent historically at the position that, as you said, there's barely anything left because there wasn't that much to begin with. But actually, Venerick Mark was – on at least my running back board, he, I had listed eight. He was number eight, kind of with question marks because of what you said. Like, he it was so explosive. When you look at, I think, he averaged 5.8 yards per carry, which was the most among Northwestern running backs. At least he had, what, 280 attempts? So yeah. uh, among people with, you know, relative decent attempts. So I, I certainly see the, the value there. No, yeah, it's, if you're just going – if, like, this draft is based on the best version of this player or in their prime, like, Venrick Mark had serious talent. He was just really bugged down by, like, injuries and stuff and some bad, like, luck. But there is incredible talent with, like, Venrick Mark. I, I remember watching Big Ten games growing up in, like, that one season. It was hard to stop Northwestern with him. All right, so, Eli, you are back up. Please do not take the next guy I want again. Okay, well – uh, let's see. I've got a running back and a wide receiver. So, okay. Give me a minute here. Gotta, if we're, if we're really going for an electric offense, I'm probably going to have to go with a quarterback. And honestly, I know the sample size is a little bit diluted, um, but to me, it's a no-brainer, at least. I'm just checking over one thing before I eat my words. Um, yeah, I mean, there are two players to me, stats, you know, pure stats-wise, maybe not wins and losses, that stick out. But from a f- pure ability and excitement perspective, I'm going to have to take Dan Person. Ah, uh, cool. I mean, I'd already taken Otto, so I'm good, but Dan Person was the number two QB on my board. That's another... Really good pick. I will. I will admit that before last summer, I didn't know a ton about Dan Persa, but having interviewed him for my piece before the feature before the Stanford game, and then having done research on what Northwestern was, you know, in the early Fitz era, and seeing just how dynamic he was, what an exciting player. I mean, he he could do both through the air and on the ground. So to me, this adds more. Uh, versatility to my offense and he I get my number one graded quarterback considering I did not think of Otto Graham (laughs) (laughs) no yeah I mean I'm all for waiting on the quarterbacks for value is just I was so upset after I lost those lost out on those top four guys that I figured you know I'm just gonna have to go a different direction here and hopefully I'm hoping the gap between my quarterback and everyone else's quarterback kind of strikes a chord although it doesn't help that there's not many of our readers who saw Otto Graham play. I I think as an extension, we might have to pick offensive coordinators too. (laughs) (laughs) This is on Nick McCall. That's what I figured you'd pick, Colin. (laughs) All right, Leah, you're up. Okay. So I, again, still don't want to pick a quarterback because I think there are plenty of good ones left, but I'm going to try to do something that I think you're going to shoot down, but I'm going to, I'm going to propose to the group because I want to pick, a a running back but I want to pick someone to play running back who doesn't actually play the running back position can is is that is that a maybe is that a I mean we saw it last season right so I want to pick I I, I just want to hear who it is first I want to pick Kane Coulter that's Wait, I don't know if we can allow that, though, because he played quarterback. He was the the te- he's, but he's the 10th leading <laughs> rusher in Northwestern yeah, history. I understand that. I was the best running back. The, the, oh, man. If I, cra- <laughs> that was my plan. If I, if I knew we were allowed to do that, I would have picked Kane Coulter, too, at running back. Oh, I mean, I'm just proposing it to the group. I don't know. I think the voters are going to have some interesting <laughs> – whichever way this what goes, do we they're going to react. What do we think? I forgot to write this into the bylaws. What do we think? <laughs> I – I'm just saying, in, in theory, he never played running back, back, back in Northwestern, but he did play wide receiver if you want to pick him that wide receiver. Ooh, but 
I mean, I could do that. Can you pick him up wide receiver and put him in the backfield? <laughs> yeah, can I, can I do that? <laughs> can I just pick him as, like, a, you know how I'm, like, um, athlete? 27S athlete? <laughs> just flex? Flex. I'll let Steve you Holder is the ultimate uh, Northwestern <laughs> track. Flex. Yes. Yeah, we should add flex. Evil genius. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I'll leave it up to you three because I guess I'm technically in charge of this because I was the one who came – came up with this like was, what do you three think like should I was she have to draft that quarterback thing. Colin was gonna do the same thing all right yeah then that's I think it's fine <laughs> okay yeah. but, wait wide receiver or running back because I feel running like back. running back we're allowed I mean I really I, if he did play wide receiver that makes me feel more acceptable with that we're in a lot of the option so we'll give it to her he ran a lot of the back. option and then again you when you're in the wildcat you put a wide receiver and they do whatever at quarterback they can throw they can run so it's not as maybe the exact same scenario, but I feel like you can fudge the argument. Can I add one more layer to the to the mix? Now are we going to allow someone to draft Kane Coulter as a as a quarterback as well? If they're interested? no, I think I don't think I, we board. can allow. That. I think you can no. only pick one guy one time. Can I pick yeah. him at both you, positions? You, you, you can't be. These players cannot be omnipresent. Okay. Because when they play each other, it's just that's going to be tough. I would have just taken five Pat Fitzgeralds. So. <laughs> That's true. Well, I thought so. Now do we get one IDP? No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. No, so Kane Coulter at running back, but I'm asking our readers to consider the moral dilemma that Leah has put you in and deduct okay. like theoretical points from her for that. But okay. he had 20, <laughs> two, 2,180 yards rushing. No, I know he's like a great rusher. 28 I, I, touchdowns. Come on, guys. I, I think played a whole might... season of NCAA 14 with him and won the Heisman. I, 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 I knew you would want him because you're his. I know how good of a runner he is. I just. <laughs> I don't I think know. The readers might not like it because Colin agreed. <laughs> 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 oh, <man. laughs> Don't listen to anything Colin said. We are very sorry. If Colin says throw, run. If Colin says punt, go for it. That's hilarious. All right. So, yeah, that. Um... So Col- Col- yeah, Colin is up now. And just for the record, this means that he wanted to put Kane Coulter at running back to have Clayton Thorson lead his offense. So I'll let you guys think, decide what you think on that. But... Yeah. Yeah. Method to my madness. Um, so, I'm going to. Uh, um, I am going to uh make a i don't uh, i don't know if this guy's on your guys's boards um but noah heron um yes he was a he he is my selection he was a top 10 rusher in 2004 um a year which saw the cats uh beat ohio state um at home so that was that was pretty big time but yeah um guy versatile guy can catch passes too um you know, maybe a little underrated on the all-time leaderboards, but um, somebody, somebody who uh, I, I had my eye on. So I'm gonna go with him. This is a very, very interesting to me because I brought it up earlier. Like he has very similar stats to Jason Wright, and they overlapped for what three years. So I'm fascinated yeah. as to, I mean. Northwestern rushing attack must have been, I mean, you know, if you compare it to, you know, Justin Jackson, like never, it's like, okay, you put two together and you get Justin Jackson, but it was obviously a different time and different circumstances. I'm just fascinated that they're all able, both able to turn in very good yards per carry, very good, you know, efficient receivers. They scored a lot and yet they were, did they share the field? I'm really not that familiar with that era that, you know, four, five year stretch of Northwestern football. Yeah, I Heron's it was a senior year without right there. So I, I, I certainly think they – and he also – Heron was also top 10 in the country for, for carries. Like he, you know, he, he bore a lot of the load when Wright was gone, um, which I think was indicative to me of, you know, his, his, you know, his stamina and his ability just kind of not only in a, in a tandem um, – also on his own so yeah he he was kind of a guy i I had my eye on also i i have to say i didn't even realize this about (laughs) jason right he did everything in two seasons he literally did nothing his first two seasons he was a kick returner who caught two passes in his freshman year he rushed three times for three yards in his sophomore year and then he just absolutely exploded the next two years i mean it's 
It's like a Frank, the Frank Kaminsky of uh, Northwestern football. <laughs> All right. So I am up and I was thinking about taking a running back here, but I do know that we only have two running back slots left open. Me and Eli each still need a running back. Everyone else's running backs are full, including Kane Coulter, the running back, apparently. So, I mean, from a value perspective, I don't think it makes that much sense. But, like, being fifth and be, being in the fifth slot in this draft and already, I think, losing out on some of that maybe positional value, I might just have to go for overall talent and, like, say, you know what, maybe I could play this better, but I'm just going to go for it. I am taking the 1995 Northwestern defense. Wow. Let's go. <laughs> All right. I, 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 was, I was waiting for that. I mean, when, when does the first defense fall? It was bound to happen. No, I'm I, very surprised we didn't take – we are not including kickers in this, though. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't have a counter to that. But, um, no, it, I mean, it's just – it was the defense that kind of – changed the Northwestern program not that the offense sucked that year but it was pretty clear why they were making the Rose Bowls because you had Pat Fitzgerald and all those guys in the back that basically just made it really hard for teams to ever get that many points on them so I mean I got Otto Graham leading my team on offense and Fitz leading my team on defense I think that's a pretty good combo and with my next pick I desperately need a wide receiver so I am going to go with Austin Carr. Mm. Yeah. I, I mean, I know it's not a yeah. great, like, like wow, Austin Carr, but for Northwestern, he had a really good career, and he's stuck it out in the NFL, so. Well, yeah, I mean, it all depends, again, how are we evaluating these players? If you're going with each player at his best, then this is a pretty darn good pick. Um, but, yeah, you, I mean, you look at the stats, and, he really just had, again, his senior year, he came out of virtually nowhere to catch 1,250 yards and 12 touchdowns. And I don't know when the next time we'll see those type of numbers from a Northwestern receiver. What, what made me really respect him is that when I was rooting for Ohio State back in 2016, I think it was, they had one of the best secondaries in the country, literally four like, first-round draft picks. And Austin Carr tore them up like that day at Ohio State. Like they just could not cover it a lot of the times. And it felt really frustrating because it didn't look like he should be getting over them, but he just kept doing it. So I don't know. Again, wide receiver is probably the weakest position out of these four groups in our draft. So, and I don't have any yet. And before people start taking them up, I thought I would get a guy who I thought was pretty good. Mm -hmm. So, Colin, you're back up. All right. Uh, so, I need receivers. Um, that's the, the one position I have not selected yet, um, aside from defense. And so another one, not sure if this guy is on your boards, but um, Lee Gissendaner. Um, oh, it's a sneaky good pick. Sneaky good pick um, is my selection. A guy who, in his junior season in 92, 68 receptions um, and – 12.4 average yards per catch um you know really consistent in his final few seasons um overall solid pick Clayton Thorson lobbing some to him you know I can I can imagine it I'm sure the commenters will love it so that's my pick I mean he'll hit every two out of two out of three of those passes maybe so if he, you know if he doesn't have to throw them <laughs> I mean, Thorson's good. It's just I, I still can't get over the fact that you took Thorson second in, in terms of quarterbacks available. You know, I – again, you guys can roast me for this. I I think just the the reliability – fact. I just – the man's a winner. The man is a winner, and we need winners on my team. No. And if, if that's not good enough for you guys, then – yeah, I, either way, one the one request I have is that Colin's team name be you know revolve around Clayton Thorson. It will, it will, or or but like Russian like the Hayden team. Clayton, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like he gets disrespected a lot. Um, I think him being the one quarterback 
that I've watched extensively as a Northwestern fan because I grew up having to watch Mark Verica throw picks for, for UVA. So, I mean, like, he seems pretty good to me. Um, yeah. Mark Verica, Jameel Sewell, David Watford, just Christ above, guys. Don't, don't ever become a UVA football fan. <laughs> All right, Leah is up next, and knowing her, she's probably going to take Andrew Marty and run a triple option with Coulter and Autry. So. That's right. That you, you guessed it. No, I'm very excited about this pick. And it's funny because Eli and I were texting before this, and he was like, oh, like, wh- what date does this go back to? And I was like, oh, like, I don't know. I think it's any time. And he was like, it oh, we'll watch some he was like, we'll watch some people pick stuff from the 60s. And I was like, oh, ha ha, how funny would that be? So I'm going to pick the 1949 Northwestern defense, Ooh. Rose Bowl champions. Um, just a little bit of background. I did some, some research. They um, had three shutout wins all season. Pretty good. They also only lost two games, one to number four, Michigan, and the second to number two, Notre Dame, only let Notre Dame score 12 points. So pretty good team. And I'm excited about it. Wait, this is the 1949? Yes. Huh. <laughs> what was that? It went four and five. 48, my bad. Oh, 48. Okay. Oh, 49. Oh, I had, I had oh, should we make it take the 49 40. defense anyways as punishment no. for Kane Coulter? Well, sorry. 40, 49 was dearer than won the Rose Bowl. So. I was say, because I had 48 on my board. 48, like, 49. 49. Did I miss uh, you said 49. I immediately thought 49 Rose Bowl, but it's technically the 48 team. Yeah, you know what I meant. I hate the way that the college season works like that, where you have to always add on, like, 18, 19 seasons. Yeah. It's, like, that's, like, the one thing the MLB has going for it, that the seasons are just one year. But, (laughs) um, all right, Eli, you are up. And once again, I plead with you, do not take who I want. Well, let's see. I mean, I could take a receiver. I could take a wide receiver. Running back or a defense. I'm personally, I mean, like I could take a running back. The the thought with me is though, you can have, and this is, I don't know, maybe I'm helping give my strategy away, but I feel like at this point, it is what it is. You you can't. It's hard to have two running backs on the field at the same time. Whereas you know you can, it's not like a fantasy team in that this team will all be playing at once, right? Theoretically, this is a unit working as one. So if going by that. I'm fine with having one very one good running back and okay, I have a backup. Whereas maybe I could load up more at receiver or take a defense. So I'm, I don't think I'm going to take a running back here. Hey, Leah already solved that problem. She's just going to have two quarterbacks with one. That's right. Back, so, you know, they say if you have two quarterbacks, you have no quarterbacks. So <laughs> that's all right. Um, maybe I'll go for, I'll splurge on a receiver. Um, let's look at my, my big board. Not gonna, not gonna share the screen right. That would be giving away too much. <laughs> My big board got shattered after that first round, one through four. Okay, let's take a look at a couple names here and make a call. If if it were Colin, hell, might take Bennett Skoranek, but he... Colin's like, shoot, that was my next pick. <laughs> Aiden Smith at running back? Question mark. <laughs> No, uh, TJ Green, but the quarterback sneaks. Mm. Mm, I don't know how I feel about this guy. Record for prolonged silence throughout the Zoom. So <laughs> yeah, seriously. That. Okay. See, these are just like, then again, here we are with you know, Northwestern receivers, so I can't can't be picky. Um okay. can't be picky, the Northwestern motto. Beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> um yeah, one more one more name to quickly look up before I mail this pick in. Uh I don't know why I can't find him unless I made up a name. Um okay. So Let's go with Ross Lane. Mm. Mm. <laughs> that that was actually the time word. Ah. Anyone have any Ross Lane comments? <laughs> All right, so 
Mac, you're up, I guess. All right. Um, that might be the pick that does me in. <laughs> I still don't have a QB, um, and I think I'm missing a wide receiver and a defense. Um, but I'm going to take a QB because I'm a little bit concerned. Um, so, And I've been doing some research. I was going to go with Brett Bazinet, but I'm not liking his touchdown to interception ratio quite very much. Um, you can say that about a lot of Northwestern. Yeah, teams. that's that's true. Um, so I'm going to go with Zach Kustak. I think Ooh, I'm saying that right. Um, he's one of the few Northwestern quarterbacks to rush for over 1,000 yards in his career. Um, so I'm going for more versatility there. He's also got some so- a, a solid touchdown to interception ratio, and we can't be turning the ball over. Not allowed. Um, so, yeah. And then for my second pick, I'm going to be taking a defense. I think I'm going to go with the 2015-16 Northwestern defense, um, led by guys like Anthony Walker Jr., Dean Lowry, Nick Van Hoos, I think, was on that team. Of course, it was sort of an up-and-down season. They started, what, 5-4-0, then went to Michigan and got blown out, then got blown out by Iowa, and then the Outback Bowl wasn't pretty. But uh, overall, very solid season for that defense. Yeah, I love the pick of the 2015 defense. I mean, I think it was overshadowed because, like, Oak Clayton Thorson and Justin Jackson, and they had two very bad losses, but those were, like, really the only blips of that season. Because this is one of the few defenses so far, so far that you can actually look at S&P Plus rankings, mm-hmm. eighth that's, in the country. That's exactly I what mean, I mean. I mean, like, the 1995 defense was – seventh in scoring in the country this one is eighth in like overall efficiency to me I don't think you can really in good faith or you know the optics wise make an argument that this defense is better than 95 but you probably could make a very close statistical case no, yeah speaking from the guy who has the 95 defense like my plan before it got blown up in my face was to wait till the last round and try and take the 2015 defense because like we saw that Bill Conley Twitter thread where he went through Northwestern stuff like, and he described just how bad the 2015 offense was. And that the fact that team won 10 games averaging under 20 points per game is really a testament to just how great that 2015 defense was that they basically dragged that team to 10 wins. So no, I think both those picks are really good. My only pushback with Kustak at quarterback is that he was helped out a little bit by a really good run game. So just, interested with it but um no yeah so uh moving on Eli your fifth pick oh yeah I'm gonna go with the defense now and I'm gonna go to the 2017 defense because it's another like you know very it was more of a balanced team much more than both 2015 was defense heavy 2016 was offense heavy they both kind of put it together in 2017 but again more recent stats 17th and S&P plus a very good scoring defense I remember just looking like and the difference between like 2018 and 29 defenses were very similar, even though the records wouldn't indicate that. And then comparing that to 2017, it was a more impact defense. It made, uh, created more turnovers. It was a, you know, the schedule wasn't terrible for them. So yeah, there could be a little pushback there, but I was very impressed by, you know, I've watched a little bit of Northwestern football then and have watched more of that since, you know, 2017 season since then. Um, but I'm very confident with this pick. Hmm. All right, Leah, you are the next one up. No idea what you're going to do. <laughs> uh, I was going to just pick a quarterback because I know who I want, but now all of you have quarterbacks, so I can just sit on that and not pick a quarterback. You could be a running back and change your running back to a quarterback. That's true. I could do that. Um, Never going to let you it... hang Coulter thing down. So, hey, I'm really pr- I'm proud of my pick. I like <laughs> it. You know, okay. So this one's a little bit tough. I want to pick a wide receiver because I need that too. Wait, I'm just let me just double check that you all have a quarterback because you could be like lying to me. I I, I have it right here. We do all have a quarterback. You have a quarterback. I do, <laughs> but I don't have. I have a quarterback, but not a quarterback. So, um, okay, okay. So people are gonna give me some hate for this pick. I think. That's yeah, not that bad. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I need a wide receiver, and I don't really like any of them left. And I was like, maybe I'll pick Flynn Nagel, but like, I just don't really want to. So I know this person transferred, but I'm going to take Kyle Prater. I thought for a second you were doing Ben Skoranek. No. (laughs) So I'm going to, I'm going to go with him for now. 
Given what's left, that's pretty good. Yeah. Looking at it now. Okay. Um, also, people are going to give me hate. Should be just like Colin's senior yearbook quote or something. <laughs> Change Twitter bio to receiving hate at Instagram. <laughs> that's why I just needed a break. All right. So um, I'm going to pick a defense. My first choice was 2015. Um, and I figured people would overlook them for the Rose Bowl team and for 95, but I'm going to go with the 2012 defense. Um, that team went 10 and three that year. Um, and uh, they have kind of a balanced year, but um, they still had some names, Ibrahim Campbell. Um, mm. Who else did they have? Uh, Danny and Proby, 74 tackles. You have a pardon? I may be giving you some heat for this pick in a second once you're done explaining because how oh, come? No, please go ahead. Dean uh, Lowry was on the team. He's a young guy. They no, were top thirty in the nation in team defense. Um, they held Illinois to fourteen points in the hat. So, you know, I think that's a winning combination. No, my only, so like the twenty twelve defense is good. I'm not like it's not that that in itself is a bad pick, but we already all had defenses, so you could have just taken them for your last pick. I, I already have my defense, so that was getting away. And, I mean, you'll lose one – I mean, I mean, all you would end up losing is maybe I, I'd take the wide receiver that you wanted. I mean, you're going to take but, Ben Skoranek, so, like but, – But the bigger thing, too, is that none of you took the 1996 defense, which was almost as good as the 95 defense, right after I took them. I'm still confused why no one took the 96 defense. There was a reason. I looked into There that. was a reason because they ranked 47th out of 110 in opponent points per game. And I know that's not everything, yeah. but yeah. to me, yeah. that was very pedestrian. I still, I still would think, like, yeah, like they're not as good as the 95 defense, obviously, but still you have the probably the biggest current name in Northwestern football history and fits on that defense. And they – we're still one of the better teams in Northwestern history. So I feel like they, like, yeah. just on a talent basis, I feel like the 96 yeah. defense deserved, like. 2012, those top 30 for opponent points per game. I mean, like, it's just, yeah, it might not be So, yeah, I just, I figured they were my solid fourth, third or fourth choice defense. Um, and I figured I needed, you know, I needed them in my corner. Um, so, Yeah. I mean, what threw me off on the defense is when Leo reached all the way back to the first half of last century and took the 48 defense. So I was not expecting that one. I was not expecting to Leah to do a lot of the things she did tonight. Guys, you expected me to be basic, and I wasn't basic. So you're welcome. Keeping it interesting. All right. So I have my last two picks here. I need a running back and a wide receiver taking the sunglasses off for this one so once again i can actually read the notebook <laughs> well, I, I have a i have like a really dark horse pick for your second running back so it was these two i have two good options here for running back i'm wondering if i just give myself time to think between the two of them or i go with the wide receiver right now though looking down the list of wide receivers it is not not incredibly inspiring um it's like really sad guys like I was expecting there to be I don't know why I was expecting there to be better wide receivers but like really depressing Thanks, I'm, Nick. I'm invoking what Eli did and taking a decent amount of time to try and find my wide receiver Ugh. just looking through again I have an idea for running back what I want to do but I'm really scrolling through some wide receivers trying to get a good idea of who I'll help you stall then, just just for for just a quick moment, because I know Sorry. I was I'm looking because I have I have to fill running back for my final spot, and I was looking and I'm like, huh, I could have taken Clayton Thorson as my second running back. He has 27 rushing touchdowns. That is one <laughs> less than Kane Coulter. Maybe, maybe Thorson's my running my second. I mean, and then I running back. Theoretically, all I'd have to do because I don't need two running backs on the field at the same time, just bring Thorson in for the goal line sneak or any sneak. Right. Right, yeah. I, except I already, yeah. Ah, I should have thought of that. <laughs> yeah, but you right. really want, is that really the person you want to, like, I know you're joking, but still, like, like 20, sure, 27 rushing touchdowns is something, but let's think about a little bit more than that. All right, I think I'll start by just taking my running back, and 
I really hope I am not butchering his name. Okay, it's not who I thought then. Yeah, I, I think, I have a feeling you might take the guy I was thinking about, Eli. I'm not sure, though. But um, Mike Adamway, I, I, I don't know if I'm saying that wrong or not. I'm sorry if I am. But he was the 1970 Big Ten MVP. He has the school record for rush yards in a game of over 300 in a game in 1969 against Wisconsin. Drafted in the fifth round of the NFL by NFL draft by the Chiefs. And yeah, I guess I, based on circumstance, am now team old school with Otto Graham, Tyrell Sutton, the 95 defense, and Mike Adamley is my second running back next to Tyrell Sutton. I will say, I thought you might you might take Ron Burton. That was my other. That was my. <laughs> I, 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 I love the Burton family and all the stories about Ron Burton. The statistical statistics don't look great, although if you go back and look at the rushing numbers everyone was putting up back when he was in college, like his last two seasons, no one in the country got over a thousand rush yards. So it wasn't like it was a, like based on how many games they played, how it was being played. Like, I don't know a ton, but so I did, and the fact that he did like Ron Burton finished 10th in Heisman voting his senior year was an All-American. I did consider him, but the numbers for Mike Adamley were really impressive to me. Like, just, he rushed for over 300 yards in the game. That's really hard to do. I mean, maybe if we play head-to-head against any of your teams, I'm getting that kind of game from him. So, I don't know. I thought he, like, just when I looked at him, he looked pretty good to me. So, I'm going with Mike Adamley as my second running back. And now for wide receiver, Eli, I would appreciate if you could stall again, because this not a ton of great wide receivers to choose from. Sure. I, I like the 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 Adam Lay pick or however you say his name. I didn't know how to say it either, but I was like doing research on him as well. And for him and Burden, I had like I had I had my list of running backs and I had them like right next to each other. So I like I think both of them are good picks. But yeah, wide receiver, have fun with that. I'm not really super psyched about my second pick, but you know you got to do what you got to do. Uh, wide receiver is just such a I should have, like, changed this to we could each take two quarterbacks, one wide receiver, two <laughs> running backs. Just do three running backs each, something like that. Give, us a, three give us a kicker. I know. All right. For a super back. Has to be a super back. <laughs> Has to be. Uh, I'm, I'm furiously trying to find Northwestern's all-time super back. I don't, I don't know if they, they designate <laughs> The McCall era. There is one really, really, like, old, older player that I am looking at who I might be able to switch to wide receiver. There's, like, no statistics to find, so that makes it hard. Ralph Moon Baker? No, that is not it, but he <laughs> did make six first-team All-Pros, given it was very early in – the existence of the NFL. Play back then. <laughs> so. That's another thing I was wondering about too, like, like the like, how much is the year going to factor into, like, the two things I was also wondering about that we haven't really talked about was like, how is the year going to factor into like what people consider like a all time like great player? Like, obviously, Otto Graham is like, you know, you can't really debate that one, but like, obviously, playing football then was very different than what it is now. I think we have also, to say like, yeah, like. Put take them from their prime and put them on the field. Yeah, because it's it is tough. You're looking at you know multiple different eras where you know stats don't mean stats don't line up. You you gotta I guess adjust for inflation. <laughs> right. I was also thinking about this when Mac picked his defense too. Like how much is I mean obviously I know we're a Northwestern site and we're full of Northwestern fans, but like it does the you know NFL and people going pro. How is that going to factor into it? Like obviously that defense in 2015 did have like you know you mentioned Anthony Walker you mentioned Dean Lowry like we have guys who are playing pro there and is that gonna you know help people say oh yeah this is definitely a good defense because they had these guys and showed like the longevity all right I am down to three guys I think I'm considering (laughs) for my wide receiver pick again this is difficult um I think I think I might have to go with a 21st century player just because it's really hard to have. If I have five out of six positions filled by, by all 20th century players, like I'm already 
leaning into the old school thing, but I kind of want to, I mean, I want Austin Carr to have someone he can hang out with, basically, on my team. So, I think I am going to go pure, like, who has the most yards. He is the fifth guy, out of, the first four already in pick, but the fifth guy in Northwestern's history to have over 2,000 receiving yards. I'm going Eric Peterman. And that was the reaction I was expecting. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it for my team. Otto Graham, Tyrell Sutton, Mike Adamley, Austin Carr, Eric Peterman, and the 1995 Northwestern defense. All right, Colin, you are up. Okay, so this one, in the spirit of my going forward, Full McCall era. Uh, I'm going to take a super back. Oh, um, uh, I'm going to take Dan Vital. And while oh, you, Colin. Colin, you're nuts. I mean, the guy was a second team all Big Tenor, uh, you know, top 10 in touchdowns and program history. Uh, in 2015, he led the team in receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. Like, uh, you know, I, I need I need somebody to catch the short four-yard outs for Clayton Thorson. So Dan Vital is my man. He's in the NFL right now. Um, you know, I know this isn't a sexy pick, but I think this could sway some voters. You know, I think this is – that's actually very funny because I was just looking up Vitale because I was like, okay, looking for my second running back here. I, like, can I just get like a goal line back? And like, I know he was, he, you know, he was prim primarily, a, you know, did risk caught passes instead of ran in, in college. Now he's a fullback that kind of does a little bit of both without really doing, showing anything in the stats for Green Bay. But I was very much looking at Vitaly considering, hmm, can I convert him into a goal line back? But then I was like, no. <laughs> I, I apologize for mispronouncing. I said Vital, like Dick Vital, Vitali, Vitali. I yeah, you know, you know, you know. I I have some like Gissendaner. I have some I have some mouthfuls on my name, but yeah, I think uh, you know this team. I, I'm a big I'm a big fan of heart and hustle, and I think this team has a lot of heart, hustle, grit, um, and I think that's going to serve us really well. We have a lot of character. We have great men. We have Damian Anderson. Um, you know, a great Northwestern man. I think we're going to be, I think we're going to be really good. And, you know. <laughs> All right, Leah, you're up. Who is your faux quarterback? Yeah, so my real quarterback now. Um, so I'm deciding between two. And one's like, a, I guess they're, cause they're both technically like new school, but one's like more new school than the other. And they've got like kind of different stats but also like very different personas so I'm trying to like factor that into it a lot because I want to get the voters in that in that regard but I think I gotta pick this one just because of like all the hype that's happened in the past year the name recognition plus you know his his impact I guess whatever so I'm gonna go with Mike Kafka as my quarterback mm. <laughs> that feels like definitely a more talent like what we know about his talent more than what we saw from him in college kind of play yeah that, that's what that was my goal do you get Mahomes too or you just get Kafka oh that's a good question <laughs> what about Andy Reid <laughs> she's gonna run a three quarterback system Coulter Mahomes and Kafka yep at the same time <laughs> and Andy Reid is her coach yeah. all of the 1948 are we the coaches of this team do, can we draft coaches? Like, can I draft yeah, like Eric? Should have done a coach too. That would have yeah. been. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa, whoa. <laughs> Give me a kicker. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that for the second draft when we somehow end up in quarantine still in 2022. There will be more positions added till. Well, like bringing Lane Kiffin as my offensive coordinator. My biggest <laughs> regret is that when I wrote that offensive coordinator thing back when we were searching for a replacement for McCall and I had all the intel from Noah and I, I had a section it was like random ones that I just want to put here I didn't put Lane Kiffin like I should have done that well if you're picking Lane Kiffin as your offensive coordinator you need to pick Greg Schiano as your defensive oh. coordinator <laughs> yeah, just really problematic people that's yeah problematic people Schiano also just was not good at his job 
literally no. he had like he had four like top five NFL draft picks on his defense and gave up forty nine to Purdue. There's really nothing else to say. He just ugh. I'm gonna let that go for now. But <laughs> Eli, you're up. Okay, so I gotta round my team out with a running back. There are a couple interesting, I guess, stat lines on here. All the running backs are still – there's not bad running backs left. Like, we were picking the bottom of the barrel with, like, wide receivers, kind of. The running backs that are still left are fine, basically. Yeah, and it's kind of, again, I'm, I'm kind of just going for a novelty one here. So I'm going to go with Greg Boykin, mm. who, again, may, may not turn heads. And he was a four-year running back for Northwestern in the or early mid-'70s, and he had a really incredible 1975. 1,105 rushing yards, about four and a half yards a carry, nine touchdowns. And obviously breaking the 1,000-yard mark now is impressive for a college back. Doing so, what, 45 years ago, I think is even – is that much more impressive. And, you know, he had up and down seasons. Otherwise, he didn't necessarily – wasn't necessarily someone to write home about per se, but for kicks because – Again, I'm running, doing this under the assumption that he is a, the backup. He is not, like, equal to who's, – who's my first running back? Um, Jason Wright. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that, that's – I'm going with one season there. All right, Mac, let's close it out. You have one last pick. We must draft a 10th wide receiver who played <laughs> Northwestern as hard as that has been. All um, right. So, uh, Colin may or may not have stolen my pick. Um, I won't say if he did or not. But right. I'm gonna go That's with the validation. Guy. I'll take it. Uh, I'm going to go with the guy who actually paved the way for Vitaly in Drake Dunsmore. Um, mm-hmm. Statistically a better player, um, except for I think Vitaly has some more accolades to his name. Dunsmore may not turn as many heads, but I think he's a, he's a great red zone threat. He's a guy that uh, Kustak can sort of, if he's not going in for the QB sneak, he can just throw the ball up. He's 6'3". Um, so hopefully he can get some red zone TDs. That's all I need him for. Solid pick. Solid pick. And with that, we have selected all 30 of our players. Uh, I think I'm going to run through some guys we didn't take, just so people, like, can, if they were wondering about that, and then we'll probably each give an explanation as – to why we think our team is really good. Maybe say if we think someone else's team is really good, probably I'll collectively crap on Colin just to get him ready for the commenters. <laughs> but um, so, I mean, quarterbacks, there were still plenty of good ones. I mean, we only took five quarterbacks. And as rough as Northwestern's history has been in football, there have been some pretty solid, some pretty solid quarterback play throughout the years. Trevor Simeon had some run in the NFL, and we did not take him as – even though he did have some – rough seasons in college um brett i can never say the last name brett bazney who can Baz- anyone t- can you say that again bazney brett bazney who was very accomplished did not get picked steve schnur the quarterback for those 95 96 teams based if you want to go a winner probably the best winner for northwestern history after Otto Graham at the quarterback position so colin likes winners i like winners <laughs> steve schnur was a good option we left out there Running backs, Eli mentioned Ron Burton. He's, again, going back, we don't have great statistics on, like, once you get past, like, 1960, college football references, like, stats kind of, like, get fuzzy. So it's really hard to tell for us. But he is, like, very, like, has a lot of accolades, had a good NFL career. So he probably would have been a good pick. Um, Dennis Lundy had a lot of rushing yards, but I morally decided I could not pick him after – reading about that story, the story of 1994, I believe it was, where he purposefully fumbled so yes. Western wouldn't cover the point spread so he could win the game he bet on, got eventually in a lot of trouble for it. So I think it's good we didn't pick him just based on that. I and thought that was an automatic loss for whoever picked him, so I just avoided it. Surprised Colin did. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Why did hey. you Wide receivers, I don't know if there's anyone out there really hoping we would have taken Flynn Nagel, because other than that, I can't really say. There was a ton of great wide receiver options we left on the board. All right, but so now we're each gonna, we can each give a little argument for our teams. Do you guys each have your teams written out, or do you want me to just read it off? I can read out. Oh, okay. All right, I'll just go in order then of what I have written down. So 
I'll start with my team. So, and again, I, I really wanted to, those guys you took with the first four picks didn't work out for me, but I still came away with a team I think I'm okay with. Um, Otto Graham at quarterback, Tyrell Sutton and Mike Adamway at the running backs, Austin Carr and Eric Peterman at wide receiver in the 1995 defense. My argument would be that the most important probably things you can get in this are like a quarterback and a defense, maybe not in a fantasy draft, but think of this like overall football, like what it takes to win. I have the best field general out of anyone here. And defense is one whole side of the ball. And we know how important defense has been to the history of Northwestern football. And I have the best defense. And skill position players are, like, replaceable. It's like, I don't know, 3 and D wings in basketball sometimes are just – like, basically, you can – or rim running bigs. I can switch these guys out sometimes, and I, I can still get similar value. Ty, like, Tyrell Sutton and Mike Adamley are not bad. Austin Carr and Eric Peterman are not bad. I, I think that I will be fine with them. They Like, I was actually really surprised Adamley lasted that long. I had him a little higher than, like, ninth on my running backs list. So I was really happy to get him there. And, yeah, Mike, I think I have a lot of highly qualified, like, players in that whole defense from 95 and Otto Graham, the greatest quarterback in Northwestern history and one of the greatest NFL quarterbacks ever. So next we have Eli's team. At quarterback, he has Dan Persa. His running backs are Jason Wright and Greg Boykin. Wide receivers, Dwayne Bates and Ross Lane and the 2017 defense. Yeah, so I think the key with my team is balance. Obviously, we have some electric playmakers on offense. Persa is, you know, even though maybe the my two running backs are not, so you know, like the kind of top four best Northwestern running backs. But you have Persa, who is a dual threat, as well as the unequivocally best receiver in Northwestern history. That air, that air attack is scary. Ross Lane will get in on the party, I assure you. Um, but, you know, you have in Jason Wright a very capable back, as well as he's dual threat himself. He will catch passes as well. And, you know, the same can be said for, wow, I'm really, really not making my case well for my second running back. Who, who did I take? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Eli, like, with your team, I look at them and I think, you know, I like Dan Purse a lot as a pick, and I, the rest of your team, I think it's like, no, I didn't had, had each of those guys written down. Like I thought they were okay. I thought thought the twenty seven defense for seventeen defense for what we were looking for was okay. The big thing with your team is just that you should probably try and air it out a lot. Get Dwayne Bates the ball as much as possible. It was basically what the ninety five team did on offense a lot, anyways. Whenever they threw it, it was get Dwayne Bates the ball. Dwayne Bates the ball. <laughs> So, and that he's just a huge mismatch, like, for anyone's going up this. So, like, I would say just if you're coaching this team, if Eli Karp is the head coach, you should be throw, throw, getting in, like, Dwayne Bates a lot of run every time. I agree. Now, I don't think the running game is going to be terrible, but I agree this the strength is in the air. However, I will bring up one thing, Dan. I agree that we were going off of, you know, each player in his prime. That's how we are evaluating this. However, just because it's so tough to compare – Mm-hmm. eras of football i would love to see otto graham go up against you know the 2017 d the 2015 d how would that go yeah i i know what you're saying there it's not like like otto graham was older but he's still like he played in the nfl like in the i believe in the 60s and i think i have that right or maybe the 50s or 60s but or maybe shoot i might actually i might be conflicting that let me quick search oh no 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 it's no. like the 40s right well, he played for Northwestern in the 40s, and he did get into the 50s. So, yeah, he's an older player, but I do think, like, talent does translate a lot of the time. I don't know why I said 60s and 50s. That's And I knew that about Otto Graham. I don't know why I blanked on there at the moment. But, no, I, I, I see what you're saying there. I, I would trust that his talent could at least transcend somewhat. It's, like, similar to how I think about all-time basketball players. Like, yes, a lot of the role players from, like, the 50s and 60s would not make it in today's NBA. But, like, I, I can – I've researched it a lot. I've looked into it a lot. I've watched some of those old games. Like, a guy like Bill Russell, Oscar Robinson, Wilt Chamberlain, Jerry West, they would still be good in today's NBA because I think the star players can often transcend era in that way, at least to a certain degree. And I would hope the same is true for Otto Graham. So, Leah, we have your team next. Mike Kafka at quarterback, Darnell Autry and Kane Coulter at running back, Jeremy Ebert and Kyle Prater at the receiver positions in the 1948 defense. 
I think your team is super talented. I just do not like how you went about it from a moral standpoint. <laughs> so my argument here is going to be that, you know, Eli said that his team is like the versatile team, well-balanced team. Well, my team is very much the team of winners and champions. And I know we said that Colin likes winners and all that. I, again, don't really associate with Colin on that front. But my team is the only team that has a Rose Bowl champion on it. So just, you know, to put that out there, you got to, you know, the 1948 Rose Bowl defense, definitely an important one to, to remember. And, you know, I think also my team deserves to win because it's just, you know, a team of, of players who made a really big impact on Northwestern, all players that I think that, you know, your average fan would generally know of. Maybe there's a few names here and there you don't really know, but like, you know, you've got Darnell Autry, who was a major player also in the Rose Bowl, just the later one. Um, obviously, Kane Coulter left his mark on Northwestern in, in many ways. And um, Jeremy Ebert's a name that I just kind of generally knew. I don't know about the rest of you. Um, and same with Kyle Prater, kind of a little bit more more of a recent a recent guy. But um, and, and now we also have a Super Bowl champion on our on our roster as well and in one way or another so you know I think I think there's as Dan said maybe maybe my strategy wasn't fair and I could have I could have been a little more transparent but I think I got the job done and, and drafted some pretty quality players does it concern you at all that your running back is a better quarterback than your quarterback maybe <laughs> like hey. in, on college production alone maybe we're we're interchangeable here we can we can all we're, we're all about the flex position here we can all play a little bit of everything sharing sharing the the, the wealth Leah's like gonna be like Belichick she's just gonna have a different game plan every week you don't know what <laughs> she's gonna do it just have a new a new game plan a new offensive scheme every week that's right all right Colin you are up your team Clayton Thorson at quarterback question mark Damian Anderson and Noah Heron at the running backs positions. Lee, I can never say that. I'm bad with so bad with names. I believe Lee Gissender. Gisson, Gissendaner. Gissendaner. I, I'm terrible with names. Dan Vitale in the 2020, 2012 defense. Colin, your explanation. Okay, so to, to address the elephant in the room, which is Clayton Thorson's presence on this team, um, I do think think for one I think commenters don't have that much animosity towards him um he was like a seven seed in that bracket I made and maybe people were distracted by the lack of auto grams in the final four but um but there wasn't a lot you know calling him out on it or calling me out on it so I I think you guys overestimate how how much hate there is to Thorson look the guy went on with 70 percent of his games under center three bowl wins um, led them to the Big Ten West Championship. I'm just, I would just roll them out every time and, and hit Dan Vitale, um, you know, on a little PA rollout. Um, I think my running back selection is probably deeper than anybody else um, so far, and that's big. I like the, you know, smash mouth football opening it up. And look, Thorson, I think, has a little bit of big play potential obviously there are some accuracy concerns but the guy knows how to win he's resilient he gets when he gets knocked down he gets back up I think the defense balances it out really nicely yeah it's maybe not as um as as rated as the the 48 or the 95 or even the the 2015 defense but um you know it has some names on there Dean Lowry Ibrahim Campbell um, and I think that it ultimately, you know, would balance it out really nicely. It was a top, it was a top defense in the Big Ten, and I think it, it would win some games for me. So, you know, you guys can give me hate, but um, Thorson, I think, is a winner. Um, I think maybe it's the bias I have from, you know, kind of picking up Northwestern fandom in 2018 and him being the only quarterback I've actually watched. And I think, aside from Otto Graham, he was – the one guy I wanted, like uh, Bassane, and and uh, I, did I pronounce that correctly? Bassane. Bassane. That's I Bassane. Think. Bassane. It's a nice French name. Um, um, you know, I, I, you know, I just I had never seen those guys play, and I think Thorson just like seeing his temperament as a leader out there. Um, I've always been a big fan of his, so I I think you guys overestimate the hate I'll get for it if I do get hate. You know. 
so it goes, I guess. But I think I my team has a shot to to make a, a difference, especially the running back position. I think is really understated. Heron had a really good senior season. Damian Anderson is a god. So yeah, I think we'll I think we'll do some damage. No, yeah, yeah. I I do like just two things. One, do not underestimate how much hate you personally will get. We can never underestimate it ever again. And I do agree with you, like Damian Anderson, the 2000 season where he broke 2000 yards, anytime any college running back can break 2000 yards, that's special. So knowing who your quarterback is and who your running back is, if I was suggesting stuff for your team, I would say you like pound the ball, man. You're like pound the ball. Yeah, that's what I like to watch. The 2012 that's defense. Like. And uh, Mac, you are the last one with the team explanation. We have Zach Kustock at quarterback, Justin Jackson and Venrick Mark in the backfield at running back, Richard Buchanan and Drake Dunsmore as your pass catchers, and the 2015 defense. All right, we're saving the best for last. Um, I'm just going gonna, gonna to lay it out for you guys. Zach Kustock, a bit of an underrated quarterback, okay? He's a dual threat. Doesn't, doesn't have eye-popping stats, but he's a dual threat. He gets the job done. Running him with Justin Jackson and Venrick Mark in the backfield, we have one of the most versatile backfields in all of the country, okay? You can run a triple option, easy touchdowns all day. You throw it to Dunsmore in the red zone, easy touchdown. Then on defense, I think they finished eighth in S&P Plus rankings in 2015. Um, one of the best defenses in the country that year. Guys like Anthony Walker Jr., Dean Lowry, Nick Van Hoos, uh, Ifadi Odenabo, all those guys, most of them, all those, or most of those guys, their names are now in the NFL, um, and they're, make, they're making their name there too. Um, and then you go to special teams, you have Venrick Mark on punt returns, 2012 first team All-American punt returner. Um, he was unbelievable. So when it comes to explosiveness in the backfield, I think I have that on lock. Um, it, it, in terms of receiving, Richard Buchanan, good receiver, second in all-time receiving yards in Northwestern history. And then uh, Dunsmore, again, great red zone threat, can't be stopped. Yeah, in terms of like just how cool both of your running backs are, it's pretty hard to argue against against you like that and no again I think we all did a pretty good job here uh I mean wide receiver is probably the place where I mean I don't know to all our readers like if you guys had better ideas at wide receivers we would love to hear them because we wide receivers gave us some trouble but I hope you guys all had fun this was a lot of fun for me and you guys our readers here inside and you you can vote on who you think picked the best team Make sure to leave some comments to if you have an explanation for who you picked the best team or if you think you could have picked a better team. I'm sure you do believe you probably could have picked better teams than us. But, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to keep reading the site. We'll continue to push them out, some great content here. We're always doing great things here at Inside You, and thank you guys for watching. And make sure to comment why Colin is wrong. Hey, I, have a, I also have a request. Can we put out a poll for the worst team? Whoever built the worst team also. So we have best and worst. We, we, we could always do a Google form and have them rank them. We could yeah. do that. Oh, it's true. We also do need a poll on is what Leah did okay. With yeah, that 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 we is true. Just need that as well. Not that I have that Colin, idea as well. Colin, but I agree with her. Yeah, Colin, you had the same idea. <laughs> I did have the same idea. I did, but I mean it's, oh I don't think anybody in the water. Why doesn't someone else jump in? We'll make a chain. We'll just do a Google form with a bunch of questions. You have to answer them all. <laughs> yes, yeah, some of them may, be, may seem has, irrelevant, some not. Yeah, who, has the right. coolest, who has the coolest Zoom background? How stupid does Dan look in his sunglasses? Stuff like that. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to all you four for doing my idea here for the football all time draft that I've been bothering you about for a while. But I hope you guys all had fun. I know I did. This is fun. Yeah, this is it's not a lot, yeah. Inside and you out.